In our last video, we looked at while loops, and, and in this video, we'll investigate how we can use ranges and for loops in our spreadsheet. So uh, we're gonna, we've are gonna we got an open spreadsheet. We've, it's empty right now. We've got an open script editor. It's also empty. We're going to go ahead and create a function. We'll start off with a function called isColor, and we'll just use this to check to see if a uh, value is in our group of known colors that we have. So we'll create a variable here. We'll call it colors, and we'll set that equal to red, blue, black, green, brown, yellow, orange, white, let me see here, purple, and that's probably a pretty good list. That's what, nine colors. That's at least the crayon eight pack. Uh, and we'll go ahead and, and create some documentation. We'll do this properly. We'll say this function identify or will identify if this value is a color we know. And we'll pass in a param. That param will be a string value. The value to check returns boolean true if the value is a known color. And we'll mark it as a custom function. And we'll say function is color and then we have to think about how we're actually going to write this. So we want to check to see if value is any one of the values in our array, uh, any one of these colors. And if you notice, we made all of our colors lowercase. So we probably want to start off by checking to see if value is anything at all. So let's go ahead and start with if value. And if it is a value, we'll go ahead and iterate through our array. So let's start with a while loop. We'll say var i is equal to zero. While i is less than colors.length, and we'll just add the i++ there. And we'll check it. If value.to lowercase equals colors i. So, and then we'll return true. If we find it, we're just going to return true right away. So let's think about how this is actually going to work. If we have a value, if somebody hasn't just called is color with nothing, or we haven't just called is color with an empty string, We'll get into this this area here. We'll get to line 11, where we will create a variable called i, and we will iterate from i or from i equals zero all the way up to colors dot length. We'll take value, make it lowercase, and compare it to one of our colors. So this i is just going to reference each one of our values in turn. So it'll be red, blue, black, green, brown, yellow, orange, white, and purple. And if it's not one of those values, well, we'll never return true. But if we said said we had brown, we'd start off with i zero, i equal one, i equals two, i equals three, i equals four, and then we'd return for, return true then. If it's none of those things, or we, we don't actually have a value here, we'll return false. So let's go ahead and check this. We'll see if we haven't made any mistakes. We should see that this will work. So if I had a, a letter like... Um, or if I had a word like bird, and we checked if that was a color, and you can see we have all that nice documentation. Uh, we'll pass in C2, false. All right, and we'll check is color, and we'll just pass in an empty value here, which is also going to give us false, which is good because that's what we hoped for. And if we use is color with nothing, still false. But if we pass in green, we should see. That's going to give us true. In fact, we can even change that. We can make that green with a capital G, and it's still going to work. We can make that all uppercase, and it's still going to work. Uh, we can make it G-R-E-E-N with all kinds of weird casing, and that's still going to work. So we can use that two lowercase to just compare this over and over again. But we could make this a little bit better. Um, well, we could actually use a for loop, and a for loop might make this a little bit more readable. It would be less lines of code. So we'll change this to for var i is equal to zero. i is less than colors dot length i plus plus. And we need to remember to take this i plus plus out because now we've just changed this from a for or from a while loop to a for loop. So let's go ahead and delete that. There we go. Uh, so that's a little bit better, but we don't actually need to convert this to lowercase over and over again either. So we could say var potential color is equal to value dot two lowercase. And then we could just use that here. We'll copy that. We'll paste it right into this spot. 
and it should still work exactly the same and we should get false 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 true in the exact same way so you can see here this is just maybe a little bit easier to understand it's a little bit easier to follow the for loop cleans it up a little bit once you once you kind of can recognize what the for loop is doing let's try another function we'll, we'll use this function to operate on a range so I'm gonna create a function that is going to tell me if there are any negative numbers in a range this function will identify whether or not a range has negatives we could count them we could say we could change this to a count negative but let's start off with just identifying if a range has negatives we'll say param and we will want to this to be a number array range the range to check for negatives and we will say this returns a boolean true if the range has negatives and we'll mark it as a custom function and we'll call this function it has negatives range and we can now just iterate over this range so let's check to see if there is a range first if range and in fact we might actually we might want to look at this uh, a little bit differently we might want to actually check to see if there's only one value here you know in which case if we, if you look at our spreadsheet it's not going to just give us you know a, a array all the time we can get individual values which is what we got here bird uh, you know we looked at these values individually so let's think about how we can make this work if we want to check to make sure that this is going to work for you know just one value or a range so if range then we can say if range dot length because what that will give us is either we're going to get a and we're either going to get a range uh, we're gonna have a range dot length which is going to say do we even have length at all in fact we could go one step further and say if range dot length is greater than zero uh, and let's go ahead and create our, or complete our code so we don't get that error when we save our code. So if range and if range dot length is greater than zero. Uh, if range dot length is greater than zero, that means we have some. So let's go ahead and use a, uh, a for loop. For var i is equal to zero. I is typically used as our counter. We just it's just been practiced for a very long time to use i as a counter for iterating through a, uh, any type of array. I is less than range dot length i plus plus and then if range i and don't forget we have to convert this to a number if number range i is less than zero return true and if it doesn't we're gonna we don't want to return false we wouldn't want to do this because if we did this then what would happen is we would just look at the first thing we would look at the very first value and we'd never go beyond that uh, so that's not what we want that would be that would be no good so we're gonna return true and if range dot length is not greater than zero we'll just check to see else if range is less than zero we will return true here as well and if none of those things are true down at the end the last thing we will do is return false so if we have a range and the range has a length, we're going to look at each one of these values. And if we have a range value or variable, but we don't have anything greater than, or we don't have a, a length, uh, then we'll return true if that one value is less than zero. Otherwise, we'll return false. So if we have some values, let's say negative three, negative two, one, 50, 25, uh, and zero, we can now use has negatives. and we can pass in that whole range which does have negatives or we could use has negatives on just the range that has no negatives and we should get false or we could just use this for one variable or one cell has negatives which doesn't have negatives either but if we were to change this C14 to C10 we'd hopefully see that that one value does have negatives. So you can see here how we can make these functions flexible so that we can check that range and we can check to see if anything is there at all. And we should also get a false if we pass, if we use a has negatives with nothing.
still going to give us false. It's not going to break. It's not going to give us an error because we've detected all of those different cases. So hopefully this has given you some understanding on how we can use for loops within our spreadsheet uh, app script and how we can how we can actually leverage this to do interesting and more useful functions. Thanks for watching.